I've been journaling consistently for the last five years and it changed my life. I'll compress these five years into this one video so you can get the same benefits. And I will show you eight practical journaling exercises that help me stop procrastinating, achieve my goals much faster and get me motivated within minutes whenever I feel like giving up. Let's start with the first one. This one got me through the darkest period of my life. And I learned this first exercise from Arnold Schwarzenegger after reading his biography. It's what he used to achieve the impossible, whether it's the, the bodybuilding champion, most successful movie star, and the governor of California. Should probably stop. And this is where I got the first glimpse of the one most life-changing lesson that I learned from years of journaling, which I'll share at the very end of this video. He said everything he achieved started with a vision. I had just been kicked out of Australia, I had to leave my girlfriend behind, and all I wanted was to get back there. And he described how he visualized everything in vivid detail in his mind. So that's what I did. And I wrote down my ideal life in detail. The business that I would have that would give me freedom, having like-minded friends all over the world, traveling. During that time, it gave me hope, it gave me drive, it gave me clarity and direction as well. He said, when your vision is powerful enough, everything else falls into place. How you live your life, your workouts, what friends you choose to hang out with, how you eat, what you do for fun. And that was very true for me. Soon after I met my buddy Dennis, randomly somewhere, we ended up talking about business opportunities and he told me about this thing and I dove right in. Would that have happened if I wouldn't have gotten clear on my vision? I don't know. If you are in a bad place, you're feeling lost or you have no motivation, this is for you. This is where everything starts. If you don't have a vision for your life, then you won't end up anywhere. So let's call this one vision journaling. First, ask yourself, what would my ideal life look like in three years or five years? And note that I said ideal, not realistic. If Arnold did that, he would have a cow farm now. The goal of this is not to make a plan on how to achieve it, but to get you excited and also get you to think bigger. When I did this for the first time, I actually wrote it as a diary entry from start to finish of the day in my ideal life. This next one is for those of you who say, I don't have time to plan out my entire life every time I feel a bit unmotivated. So here's a quick version that I like to do as well. This one within five minutes, gets me pumped. It lights a fire inside of me to get back to work. Let's call it positive worry. Do you know how when you worry, you completely blow things out of proportion and catastrophize? For example, you think, what if I launch my business and I lose all my money and then I can't get a job. I have to move back in with my parents. All my friends make fun of me. Here, we do the same, but in the opposite direction. Just start with what if. This next video is the one that will finally pop. Views start piling in, I get subscribers, I get more revenue, I can actually pay myself again, I'm not running dry anymore, plus then I can hire someone and we become this media company that has a huge family of really ambitious people that are hungry for more in life and I know I'm only five minutes away from lighting a fire inside of me. Once I had a vision, I was driven and I started my business, things got pretty overwhelming. I had a hundred things on my to-do list and an infinite amount of things that I could focus on to grow my business. And I was working all day, but I felt like I was making no progress. This next one is for productivity and getting stuff done. The kind where you can do in two days what takes others a week or really achieve in a year what takes others three years if you apply properly. Because things changed for me once I heard about Gary Keller and he's also the author of The One Thing. And the question he would always ask himself is what's the one thing I can do that would make everything else easier or unnecessary? When I applied it, it became crystal clear to me. There's really only one thing that I had to focus on. And instead of worrying about some tactics to get customers to write better reviews or some SEO strategies, I realized the most important thing is that I just have the best possible product for them. Because if I did that, everything else became unnecessary. If they liked my product, they would naturally write better reviews. I would get more sales. When I get more sales, I rank better, which means more customers, more reviews, more sales. All if I just focus on that one thing instead of a hundred different things. It's so easy to get seduced by the 12 different tips that all help a little bit but they all distract you from that really one really important thing. And since then, I've been obsessed with this laser focus and always finding the one thing that I need to focus on. This one here is from my buddy Steve and he said, people think focus means saying yes to the thing you've got to focus on, but that's not what it means at all. It means saying no to the hundred other things that there are. Here's how to do it. First, make a list of all the things that come to mind that you could do to achieve your goal. And then you wanna narrow that focus by asking the focusing question. What's the one thing I can do that will make everything else easier or even unnecessary? And make that thing your absolute priority and do nothing else until that one thing is done. 
This next one here was huge for me. I've mentioned it in a couple of videos before and you guys asked for it in the comments as well. And it absolutely skyrocketed my business within 20 minutes. It sounds so flashy, but it's true. In fact, it was 15 minutes, okay? At first, my goal was just to make 3K per month by the end of the year, which was six months away. But with this exercise, I was able to map out a plan that achieved a 10 times bigger goal. So it was a quite profitable activity for me. And a couple of months after the deadline I had set, I actually achieved the $30,000. Patrick Grove, serial entrepreneur, cool guy, did something similar. He sat down at a Starbucks and journaled on the question, how can I make $100 million in 12 months? Pretty ridiculous if you ask me. Then he bought a small website listing cars for sale, raised venture capital, merged it with multiple other platforms, and 12 months later, the company iCar Asia went public at a valuation of $100 million. So what did Patrick think? Well, this kind of worked out. I mean, I'll do it again. So he sat down to journal about how can I make $1 billion in 24 months? And this time, he failed. His company iFlix, the Netflix of Asia, was valued at only 500 million after 24 months. What a loser! It makes you think, maybe there's something behind it. Maybe. Maybe. Why does it work though? Because questions like that challenge us to think bigger. And then oftentimes we see a possibility that we didn't see before that has been there all this time, but we just never open up the possibility for that. And I heard Brian Lee talk about it, who's also an entrepreneur who's built billion dollar companies, say that pursuing a 10 times bigger goal is not necessarily 10 times harder. It's just a different path. It's just a different set of actions. And he was saying how he had this little frozen yogurt store while also running this huge company. And the little store was actually giving him more headaches than the big company was building with hundreds of employees. And sometimes that path can be quite obvious and completely possible, but we just never considered it. And it just shows up once we ask for it. By the way, all these exercises are part of this journal that I'm thinking about launching as a product. If you're interested, I'll just put a link in the description. Here's how to do the 10 times exercise. First, write down your current realistic goal. Then multiply it by 10. Of course, don't multiply it by 10 if you wanna lose 20 pounds, because if I lost 200 pounds, I'd look very different. But just magnify it to an absolute dream scenario. Now careful, this is where people usually get uncomfortable because they see this big goal and they're like, I have to achieve this. And they come up with all these stories and excuses like I can't do it because I have a bad knee. I don't have the money. I don't have the confidence. I've never done something like this before. We ask ourselves if someone else in the same position as me had achieved this goal, what would they've had to do in order to achieve it? See, by doing that, we strategically move around all these excuses that we have because it's someone else. And here you just brainstorm. What are the actions they had to take? What are the milestones they had to hit? The habits, the skills, the emotions, the relationships they had to build. And I know it's easy to say, oh, I can't really come up with anything, but don't be think lazy, keep digging. And once you have something that could potentially work out, is there anything really stopping me from doing that? After I had a clear plan to achieve that 10 times goal, I was very overwhelmed and very stressed. So much could have gone wrong. And, and this one is for you whenever your mind is racing. And I heard someone call it the mental windshield wipers, which I think is very accurate. But I also like the brain dump or mental vomit, because that's really what it is. You just start writing down all the thoughts that you have, everything that comes up in your mind, no filter, don't worry about grammar, unfiltered, raw, unorganized, messy, and keep writing until everything that worries you is on paper. Then you can look at your thoughts from a distance. It's not a storm that's raging in your mind anymore. It's just on paper, right there. For you to look at. And so many times when I feel overwhelmed by all these things I have to do, they're just floating in my mind. Like, oh, I have to script the next video. And then also, oh, there's thumbnail for the next one. Also the call with one of my subscribers is coming up. And when I sit down to write it out, I realize it's actually just these three items that I just said. I just thought it was more, but it's actually just this. And then I feel stupid every time. Now this next one is for you procrastinated out there, which is pretty much everyone. To make a long story short, business went zip, I made it back to Australia, but my business was a mess and I kept procrastinating on building systems. And I wondered, why do I really procrastinate? And the first answer that pops up is, oh, I'm just lazy and I just need to do it. And that's just surface level BS because there's a much deeper psychological cause that's making you procrastinate. Because what if it's completely normal and healthy to procrastinate? What if you had perfect reasons to procrastinate? And if you knew what those reasons were, you could address them and make it much easier to do that challenging thing. This exercise goes to the root of your procrastination. Speaking from experience, procrastination is always a sign that I need more clarity. And the three most common reasons are, one, you're not clear on how much work is involved, two, you're not clear on whether you're capable of doing it, or three, you're not clear on what the potential outcome is. It's usually one of these three. And think about it, human beings or 
any other species for that matter, we hate uncertainty. We don't want to move forward when we have it. But once we remove that uncertainty, it becomes easier to move forward. Here's how to do it. When you're procrastinating, ask yourself, why am I really procrastinating? And then you want to write down all the thoughts that pop up immediately. What is the first thing that comes up? And don't stop it. Well, I just don't feel like it and I'm, I'm lazy. Why do you not feel like that? Keep digging deeper. What specifically makes you not feel like it? Because the reasons why you're procrastinating are hidden behind these thoughts. And once you create absolute clarity on why it is that you're procrastinating, you can strategize on how to make it easier. Now, if you've seen the video where I talk about my story, then you know what happened. After selling my business, my girlfriend and I broke up, which then terminated my visa. So I had to leave again, leave all my friends, which was devastating. But with this one, I know I'm always just five minutes away from feeling great about my life, no matter how depressing or hopeless things seem. So let me show you the gratitude on steroids exercise. I call it that because it's not just where you write down what you're grateful for, because it takes things to another level. Think of something really bad that happened in your life. Maybe you lost someone or you were diagnosed with an incurable disease that you have to live with for the rest of your life. And think about how happy you'd be if you could undo that and how you would give anything to make it right. With that in mind, contrast it with this. How many things are there that could have gone wrong, but they didn't? and you could be insanely happy about being in your shoes now. As an example, I just sit down and write, imagine, imagine I lost my eyesight and I could never see my loved ones again. I could never see a sunrise again. I could never enjoy movies. I would just see darkness and think about all the people that are suffering from blindness. They would do anything to be in the position that I'm in right now. Somebody's greatest dream is your reality. And that's a fact for all of us, if you're watching this. If all we do is change our perspective, and that's something that is always in our control at any time. And this is the single most important lesson that I've learned from journaling. We have control about how we see things, how we feel, the possibilities that show up to us. All you need is a pen and a paper. If you wanna see how I built my business also using journaling, then check out this video here, and I'll see you over there.